friends, welcome back or welcome if you're new. My name is Emma and this is Emma's Cottage. In today's tutorial, we're gonna be sublimating onto a waffle towel. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So right here, they call it a waffle towel just because of the type of material, the texture that it has. Let me show you. See, kind of looks like a waffle. Um, this one I actually got from rtssublimationblanks.com. I wanna say at the time of recording this video, these are on sale for $3.75 each. I know that you can probably get them cheaper, different areas on the internet, Amazon. Um, I'll try and find a few on Amazon and I'll list them in my Amazon storefront, which you can see below. Um, you can see in the description below, you'll see my link tree. My link tree will take you to my Amazon storefront. And again, I will try and find um, some bulk packages of these. But if you just wanted a few here and there just to, you know, for yourself or for gifts, for friends or family, um, it is a very, very good quality. This is the one, like I said, that I got from rtssublimationlinks.com. So what image? I went ahead and I found an image. I think, where did I find this one? I believe this was di designbundles.net. Um, there was no designing at all that went into this one. However, I will be having a follow-up tutorial. It'll just be quick, short and sweet tutorial on if you didn't want this design all to be black like this, you could piece out different colors. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in Cricut Design Space. If that's something that you're interested in doing, then go ahead and follow the, the link up above. Go ahead and post it up above. Now, if you don't see the link, that just means I'm still in the process of editing that video. And as soon as it's uploaded, then that link will show up. You can go ahead and click it. Um, you can always, again, go to Emma's Cottage, go to my channel, click on videos, and then that will show you all of the different videos that I have posted. This one I will probably name something like sublimating on a waffle towel and this will be part one and then the designing will be part two just so I can show you if you're interested how to change an image around to switch it up its colors. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this heat press turned on. Um, I did look up on the website rtssublimationblakes.com and it did come with the instructions for this. Super easy. You just double check them right. Yeah, super easy. This is the typical press. So with um, polyester, a lot of times you're gonna do a 400 degrees for 60 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that this is correct. As of right now, it's set at 400. However, it's only at 40 seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and increase this to 60 seconds. Perfect. Um, now, one thing you wanna do before you even get started is we want to lint roll this fabric. So if you guys are new to sublimation, make sure you check out my channel. I have a lot of videos on how to sublimation everything. Um, I even have two videos with like question and answers about sublimation. So that would be a really good spot for you guys to start. Start there and then come back or finish this and then go there, whatever your heart desires. Um, but we're lint rolling just to make sure we get off any of those loose lint pieces that would be on the fabric. And the reason we do that is because whenever you're pressing with extreme heat like this, which 400 degrees is pretty darn hot, um, it can actually, I don't know why, I don't know what the science is behind it. If you guys know the science behind it, list it in the comments below because I really don't know why they do this. But some of those loose fibers on your fabric actually change color. Um, and what I've noticed, it changes to like a grayish blue color and you'll just have all these weird dots. I mainly see it like when I'm sublimating straight onto a white polyester shirt, I'll see those dots every once in a while. And sometimes there's really no going around that. Like you can lint roll it to your heart's content, but if there was one little piece of lint in there, sometimes you'll get those dots. So, but that is the reason behind why we lint roll. The other reason, the next thing we have to do is pre-press. And the reason you pre-press is because, there's a few different reasons, but the main one is to get any moisture out of this fabric that could possibly be in this fabric because we definitely, uh, moisture and sublimation, they do not mix. So you're pre-pressing to get the moisture out. The other reason you're pre-pressing not huge reason for sublimation, but it is a very big reason if you're gonna be doing HTV, which is heat transfer vinyl, or like a full color transfer, those type of things. Those things aren't meant to shrink. However, we all know that sometimes when you put heat on fabric, the fabric is going to shrink just a teeny tiny bit. So it's almost like you're pre-shrinking your fabric so that when you go to put something on your fabric, like HTV um, or a full color transfer, those aren't going, because they won't shrink, but this, it, this fabric will so it won't fully adhere correctly. So you have to pre-shrink it first so that when you do it the second time, there's no pre-shrinking happening and they will adhere correctly. I hope that I explained that clear enough. I know it can kind of be a little confusing. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get this set up with the way I want it folded. Um, I might be weird, but I'm gonna fold it the way my mama taught me. And the way we do that is we just fold it equally down the middle and put a line. Now, I'm not saying you guys have to fold it this way. 
that's just how my mama taught me and I'm gonna do it that way, okay? And then what we do is we actually fold it one more time, like this down the middle. And I'm gonna go ahead and pre-press it like this so that it's already somewhat um, gonna have those crease lines for me so that I know exactly where to press my image. So we're at 383. I'm gonna still go ahead and pull this out and I'm gonna pre-press it. It doesn't have to be at the full 400 degrees to um, pre-press. I always like to protect my substrate, which in this case is my towel. So I'm going to cover it with a piece of Teflon. You could cover it with um, butcher paper, parchment paper, whatever you like. I usually do Teflon for this part. Again, we're just gonna pre-press for about five to 10 seconds. Holy cow, it's already at 400. This thing heats up so fast. It's crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and do 10 seconds just because I want those crease lines. You guys are interested, this is a new heat press that I got for Christmas um, from HTV Ront. I'm loving it so far. Um, honestly, I did, like my Starcraft is down here on the floor. My Starcraft clamshell that you guys have seen me use in my other videos, I love it to pieces as well. There is nothing wrong with the clamshell. Um, I've just always wanted one where the drawer pulls out, so super excited about that. And I think the additional of being able to just let it go down by itself and come up by itself is pretty awesome because my hands are always busy. Okay, so you can see I pre-pressed that. I'm gonna open it back up and you can clearly see where it is that I want my image to go. Looks pretty good to me. Now, I don't think it really matters on what side is pressed. Right now, the fabric, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The fluffiness of the part that was straight on here, they kind of seemed flat, but I have a feeling that once I wash it, those fibers will stick back up. Um, let me see if I can explain that to you. Hopefully you guys can see from here. You can see how this side kind of looks fluffy, but that side, hopefully you can see it, it's kind of flat where the platen was straight on it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and press this. Now one thing, like I said, that I love about this press is I can pull it out and I can get it totally prepared from here versus having it here and then having to lift it and risk it shifting. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna lay it sideways like this. You know what I could do? I could fold it in half, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna use some butcher paper. Sorry, not butcher paper, parchment paper. This is what I have on hand right now. It's my favorite. You can find it in my Amazon storefront if you're interested in using it. I have heard people say that they've used butcher paper before that doesn't work. I keep saying butcher, I mean parchment. Um, I don't know what to tell you. If you use parchment paper that doesn't work for you, then buy the one that works for me. <laughs> like this one is perfect and I love it and I love that it comes already in pre-cut sheets and it's really not that expensive and it lasts me forever. Okay, so I put one in between. That way it won't bleed through to the back side that I'm folding in half. Then I'm gonna grab my image, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very carefully tear so that we don't risk having the lines that will sometimes show up. Being very careful that I don't go into the ink. <clears throat> and if you're really risky, you can do the top too, but this one's kind of close. Let's see if I can wing it. Oh man. Yep, there you go. That's what it would look like. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like that. Now, this is a really important part. You wanna make sure that you're putting it um, face, like not upside down, right? Right side up. Because when I when I put this towel out, I wanna make sure that it's right side up, right? Um, and then of course, when you guys are sublimating, when you're printing your sublimation image, it has to be mirrored when you're printing it. So when I'm looking at, right, at, looking at this right now, it's actually backwards to me like that. it's gibberish I'm like what the heck does that say so what my process is is I will actually hold it up to the light there's a light right now that I can see and I can see that it says this is a self-serve kitchen if you cook it clean it if you dirty it wash it so I can read it through the paper that's how I know that it's correct and then when I lay it down it's going to sublimate correctly I go ahead and center this the best I can that looks pretty darn good to me um, and then the next thing you want to do is tape it down so it doesn't shift I'm just gonna use a few pieces here and there. This is sublimation, not sublimation, I'm sorry. This is heat resistant tape. So make sure that you're not taping with regular tape. This is meant for this type of process. I think four will be sufficient. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add one more piece of parchment paper on top. This is to protect my press, the platen, the heat platen on the top. I wanna make sure that the sublimation doesn't blow through or bleed through to that. So adding this piece of parchment paper is gonna help protect it. So we're gonna go ahead and push it in. And then we're gonna go ahead and click ready and it's gonna lower it all by itself. 
love it. And then in 60 seconds, it's gonna go ahead and raise by itself. So I truly don't have to worry about standing right next to it. I could clean up my class. I could clean up my craft room, keep my hands busy, and not worry about it overcooking. All right, it's done. It's gonna go ahead and lift. And then I can go ahead and pull this out. Very carefully take this off the top. Now, one thing I wanna make sure I point out, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on here, but I can see the image very lightly on here. So I typically will never reuse this part because when you go to sublimate your next image um, on your next piece of fabric or something, if you were to reuse this, sometimes it will take the ink from here and press it onto your new thing. So I would never reuse the top sheet. All right, let's take a peek. I typically like to use my little Cricut spatula to um, very softly pull up the tape. This is not very sticky tape at all, so you really don't have to use too much force. It turned out so good, you guys, I love it. Now we've got the piece in between. If this one doesn't have any ink on it, if it doesn't look like it does, you could absolutely reuse this one. All right, who's ready to see? Let me shake it off just a bit. Let me turn this off. Air it out. And then one thing I do like to do is get my lint roller and just roll right over it to help bring um, any of those press marks up. And honestly, doing this is helping um, those fibers of the towel pop back up. Looks so good. You guys ready to see? So simple, right? Such a cute towel. And like I said in the tutorial that I'll be doing, if you didn't want it black, I will teach you how you can either change the full color to something completely different. Again, this is an image I purchased, I believe from Design Bundles. Um, Maybe your kitchen is done in the color blue or red or yellow. These cute top pieces here and this bottom piece here that's kind of decorative, you could change those colors to match the color of your kitchen. Maybe the stars you could change those. You could definitely do whatever you want with this image by just kind of changing the colors so that you can print it the way you want it. So I will be teaching the, um, that in part two of this tutorial. Let's go ahead and line it up like my mama taught me. Fold it in half, see how we did. So cute. Oh, my kilt, it just came out of Let's try this again. Try this again, Emma. Right down the middle, about right there. There we go. How, how about that? Did I do better that time? How cute, so, so cute. Well, that's it for today's tutorial. What did you guys think? Are you guys gonna try and sublimate onto a waffle towel? If you always don't wanna use the one from rtssublimationblanks.com, I think the biggest thing to remember is it has to have a high polyester count so that the sublimation ink will adhere to it. As always, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you guys taking the time out of your day to watch my tutorials. If you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. But the most important thing, you guys, ring that bell so that you will get notified anytime that I upload a new video. Until next time, we'll see you later, friends.